Something that's not talked about as often is the amount of racial trauma that a lot of people of color are experiencing right now in the news. There's so much that is being reported on a day-to-day -day basis about injustices that are happening in our communities uh, locally, nationally, globally. And when we take all of that in on a day-to-day -day basis, whether we're reading it in the newspapers or watching it on MSNBC or wherever you, you are getting your news source from, it gets into your um, system in a way that can be really debilitating when you have to get up and um, go about your day. You're taking that energy with you and um, it feels like being re-traumatized um, every day. There are constantly triggers all around us um, and I think that um, oftentimes we're um, conscious of it and it comes out in conversation with each other, trying to support each other, um, offer um, uh, solutions on how to manage that um, in our day-to-day -day activity. But sometimes it's subconscious and sometimes we don't realize just how much this is impacting the way we are um, moving in the world. And it's something that I think that um, it's important for people who are allies to be aware of that when you are in the company of people of color, of African Americans, Black Americans, Mexican Americans, um, and any group that's being targeted right now, uh, it's important to realize that there's a level of stress that's over, above, and beyond our normal level of stress. And um, it's, it's not something that may always be apparent uh, upon first glance, you know, but it's important to know that that's stress that we're carrying with us. So whatever we're dealing with in our lives, our financial struggles or, or circumstances that may have to do with health or family or, or kids or um, jobs, that all of that goes into the pot of, you know, what it is that we are carrying with us. And when you add a huge pile of um, in-your-face uh, stress from um, racial triggers um, that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis, that's a lot. That can be just a tipping point that would send a person clearly over the edge and to that place of just um, being immobile where you just can't function, you know, just getting out of bed in the morning with all of the systems of oppression that are already in place. And then you add on to it just the way that things have been playing out since the 2016 election and just how um, m more outspoken people are about their hate and how divisive it has um, become in our um, communities. So that's a lot to carry. And I, um, I, I think that it's tricky to figure out how to navigate those spaces in our personal and professional lives and um, and keep it all together. Um, and I just think it's important that um, people who aren't directly the targets and who want to help, um, just hold space for that. Make, make it, um, uh, stay in that place of awareness. Understand that um, that's always a context that we're working from, you know, whether we are conscious of it or sub it's, it's on a subconscious level, but there's, there's, it's always there. And, um, and we may or may not always be able to speak about it in every conversation. Um, and we may or may not always feel um, as articulate in every moment when it comes to people who say, how do you feel about, you know, what happened? Uh, how, what is your, what's your idea? What's your thought about, um, you know, how this is playing out? You know, sometimes we're just trying to process all of that um, in the moment, in real time. And it's just, it's, it's a lot. So it's just something to be aware of and show compassion, show, show understanding, give grace, give grace, give grace to receive grace. So if we wanna to work together as a community to bridge the gaps that remain, it's important that we realize that we're all, all of this, we're all traumatized by what's happening in our communities, you know, um, and, um, it's in our DNA, actually, um, I think, um, our American DNA, you know, we, all of these 
um, messages that are um, overt and all these messages that are subliminal. It's, it's triggering responses that are physiological oftentimes, certainly spiritual and emotional and mental um, as well. So um, be kind to each other, give each other room to breathe in this and um, try not to be so quick to judge each other. Um, and that's for all of us, you know, and maybe turn some of that back on ourselves. You know, we have to give ourselves grace. We have to give ourselves room to miss the mark. We have to give ourselves room to um, to not always get it right, but to be moving in the same direction um, in a unified way to resolve whatever it is that remains um, screwed in this country, which is so much lately. So um, thank you for listening to that. I don't know if it made much sense to you, but it's just something that I feel like we have to talk about and keep talking about. And I feel like it's important that um, for people who don't have... Um, relationships with people of color that you hear from someone maybe that you know um, make it personal you know that's the thing about race you have to name race but you also have to make it personal you know people read about um, stories in the news and I'm sure they feel a certain amount of uh, sympathy and maybe even empathy but it's not the same if you don't know someone you know you need to hear the stories of people your neighbors your friends your co-workers your colleagues people who you actually uh, have some kind of relationship with to, to hear our personal stories and to um, understand what's happening right now in the context of someone that you actually know to some degree, have some personal connection with. I think those personal stories are really, really important to share. Um, let's keep doing that. Let's keep talking, doing what we can to support each other in this crazy